Hey guys, in this video we've got the Creighton 4S version 2 and this one's been around the channel for a while and we really like this one. This one rated pretty high and the modifications they made at the factory for this one over the version 1 were pretty substantial. It handles good, it drives well, it's fast and it stunts pretty good too. It really does hold up pretty well as well but there's one thing about it that I really don't care for and look at the size of this. This thing's big guys. This is a big truck it came with a slipper clutch and I've never been too tickled about that fact. Having a slipper clutch in something this size doesn't really make sense. I know that in some of the smaller stuff it does, but when you get this kind of weight involved, a slipper clutch doesn't seem to really make a lot of sense to me. And if you've been watching the channel, you know we unboxed the Mojave 4S not too long ago and it came with one of these. Now this is a differential module for the center. This would eliminate the slipper clutch all together if we can get it installed. The chassis on the Mojave is a little different than this. Hopefully the mounting points are the same, but if we've got to get in there and do some customizing to get it to fit, I really want this in there. In this video, we're going to take this thing apart and we're going to do our best to get this installed and then we're going to test it and see how it holds up if we can get it in. This could be a really short video or this could be a really cool video. We won't know until we get after it. Check this out. All right, so let's get the body off. And we need to get the top rod out of the way as well so we can get this out. So let's back this grub screw off. And then we'll push this other one through. And that'll allow this to stand straight up and get out of the way. Now let's get the drive shaft out and that's spring loaded so just compress it and lift up. There we go. Now let's flip it over. We need to get this screw out so we can get that orange or that red block out of there. So there's the screw for that and just pry gently against the motor and it'll pop right out. There we go. Okay, let's disconnect the motor wires because we're going to pull this whole bracket out. So we want to get those out of the way. And these can be a little stubborn sometimes, but they do come apart. Alright, so we're going to use two screwdrivers here. One just to lift the tab a little and one to pry gently. Now we're just going to get it broke loose a little on one side and then pry on the other side and look at there, it slides right out just like that. And the whole unit will lift right out in your hand. This one's pretty dirty. Let's go ahead and clean things up. Alright, so that's looking better. Now let's get a little comparison here and the new one is definitely thicker but the mounting points look about the same. You're going to need a couple of screws for those two holes in the bottom so let's dig a couple of short ones out. I don't think they're going to be, need to be long. The short ones should do it. Alright so let's go ahead and take this apart because we are going to need to transfer the motor. Pull the slipper out and we'll back these two screws out and that will relieve the motor from that so we'll be able to put it in the other one. And while it's out let's do a little cleanup. Okay this one's got five screws in it so this will take a little bit more effort. We'll speed it up some. There we go. Let's get her apart. Nice. And there's that differential we want so badly. Those are a really nice build and we'll go ahead and check the teeth, make sure that everything's the same and they appear to be the same so that should work out just fine. Get a little Loctite on here and we're going to go ahead and mount the motor. Now we're going to keep this loose until we get the differential in so just get them started and then we'll adjust it and we'll put it together. Drop that right in place. And now we're going to go ahead and set the gap for the teeth. Now this, this requires a little bit of eyeballing because you've only got one bearing connected. 
So you've got to kind of center that up as you get things lined up. So we'll get everything kind of in place and then we'll check our center. That looks pretty good. And we've got a good gap there that's going to work. And the gap is not very big, guys. It's pretty small, like thinner than a sheet of paper. There we go. So let's go ahead and put it back together. And I like to cross these up as I put them in. You put one in one corner and then cross over and do the next and so forth. Kind of like you would with the lug nuts on a wheel so that everything goes down nice and flush. And then of course, always torque by hand here, guys. There we go. And the module looks pretty good. Now let's see how it fits. It does feel like it'll go in there. Everything seems to line up. You always need to rock these back and forth a little bit to make sure they click in. And it went in no problems. That was nice. There we go. Okay, let's see if the block fits. And it's a little stubborn, but there you go. It went in. And it's sitting right where it's supposed to. So these are the screws you got to have to lock it down on the bottom. So the long one goes to the center block. And the two shorter ones should go in the outside. Now, these are screws that we had. You'd have to buy them if you don't have any, guys. All right. Now let's just get a piece of Velcro and hold this out of the way because it's been a pain in the neck since we started. So just go around the shock tower and we'll just put a little piece here just to hold it out of the way. It is sticking up, so don't stab yourself in the eye with it or anything, but that'll keep it from falling down on you. Okay, so let's connect the wires. And it's nice that these are color-coded. This will go really fast. There we go. Tuck them down. Get them into the holder there. Nice. Sounds pretty good. Let's get that drive shaft in. And even though the differential housing is bigger, this is a spring-loaded drive shaft and it goes right in. Let's go ahead and get that Velcro out of there and lay that rod back down. Okay, and we're gonna need to push that one pin through. And then we're going to have to put the set screw back in so it stays. There we go. And let's just go ahead and assemble all this stuff here so we don't lose the pieces. And get it put together. And there's the slipper clutch. Let's get the body on it. Okay, so that made me happy. That thing slid in pretty nice. It was a little stubborn to get in and it did take a little finessing, but there was no modifications to do to the truck at all. It did slide right in, the little block held it in place and the two screw holes in the bottom lined right up. Did take a little bit of finagling to get them lined up, but they do go and everything is connected and sounding good. There's only one thing left to do. Let's take it out and see if there's an improvement or not. I gotta tell you, <clears throat> I'm sure glad to have this out of there. I understand this in the 10 scalers, but come on. In this one, there's a lot more mass in this one, and this was not up to the challenge. Let's do this.
Okay, so the tests were successful. It went right in. Everything functioned the way it was supposed to, and it's really slick. One note, though, I would definitely swap out the fluids, the stock fluid that came in the differential. That was a little heavy, and it was a lot of, lot of getting wheels up in the air and stuff. And that, if you're into that, great, put it in stock. But if you want a bit more control, you might think about thinning that fluid down. And one thing that I was really glad to do was get rid of this. I understand putting it in the smaller cars, but these big ones, you need to have that independence between the front and the rear to get any kind of decent control out of your rig. I was really happy with the way it went right in nice and slick. It did for the first installation, it took a little bit of finagling to get it to click into place, but it does go with no modifications. That's awesome. So there it is, it's in there and it works. Cool. So if you haven't already, don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread. You know, we love doing videos like this. This is cool because it's, it allows you to tinker, take parts from one, go to another. You never know if it's gonna work. I watched one guy do it online and I believe he was trying to put one of these differentials in a senton and there was a lot of grinding involved. I didn't know what we were gonna run into in the 4S platform and I was tickled pink when this thing went straight in. That's cool. If we get a chance, I have another one of these coming and we're gonna try and get it in the big rock and that's a 3S car, so I don't know how that one's gonna fit. If you guys have anything you'd like to add to this video, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, for AJ Jam Studios, I'm AJ Sand. Mm, keep ranching, guys.